What's up, everybody? Austin here. Uh, we'll have another trade recap I want to go over, but before I do, I want to say I'm not licensed, I'm not registered, I'm not a financial advisor, and this isn't investment advice, and you shouldn't take it as such, even if it sounds like it. But yeah, over on Valentine's Day, I had a nice trade on RBZ that I want to go over, and I got I got some questions on RBZ um, because of its, you know, because part of the reason that got me in the trade was it's kind of the same old story with a lot of this, the, the stuff that I long. I long for the, the hype factor news plus the low float and I look for you know some kind of interest. Uh, normally I determine interest by volume so and I, and I look at the volume relative to the float, you know, the same spiel that we've been going over and this is just another example. So I want to go over this really quick that RBZ, oh the arrows are gone, I'm doing this over the weekend but I have my chart up here. I believe. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, it was better. Yeah, a little bit bigger. So, yeah, this is my trade on it. Um, side by side here. Yeah, so I, I was a buyer here. Um, I decided to get my feet wet in the trade uh, here and add just a, it's very typical. It looks a lot like my other trades where I get my feet wet in the trade. I, you know, I put a starter position on them. Once I like it, once it's established something that I really like, like a nice base or a nice floor, something to risk off, I'm comfortable putting more shares on. Same old story with a lot of my trades. Um, and I want to go over thought the, the I want to go over this trade um, from beginning to end. So the first thing that I did was I looked at the first thing I always do is I look at the daily chart on a stock. Uh, anything that pops up onto the radar, I'm like, what does the daily look like? And the daily one goes this far on DAS, but I think on Thinkorswim it goes a little bit longer, and it's essentially a turd. Um, I'm pretty sure. And, but what strikes me more um, is that the fact that its float was 2 million shares, which is really low, exactly what I like to trade. And the news was really hyped, so that combination. The news was that Intel um, like disclosed a stake. And, you know... Uh, I want to go over this thought process for the trade because this is kind of an, a key element to why I'm like how I justify my longs on these crappy companies. Now, a lot of people question, yeah, but yeah, isn't the news old? Isn't the news like fluffy? It's 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 bullshit. Like it's old news, and you'll see a lot of this stuff on Twitter. Like it's old, and you'll see people bashing uh, the stock. You know, I actually kind of like that as a long. I like it when people bash stocks on Twitter. You know, it makes you know, if you can get it more short crowded, you know, the more the better. And so, like, it doesn't, for me, it almost doesn't, almost doesn't matter if the stock is, is a turd. If the stock, you know, if the, if the, if the news is old or fluffy or, you know, like, it's unimportant, whatever, it, you know, if it's, if it's full of crap, basically, like, if there's dilution in the stock, I almost don't care. I don't put a lot of faith in that because price action is king. And, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, Intel disclosing the stake is old news because it's not old news to a lot of the people who are going to be trading it this morning. That's all that matters is price action. Who's trading it this morning? You know, and if, if there's a lot of hype for it, people think that like Intel is going to buy this, like, and what's possibly next? Like, you know, is, is it possible that Intel might, you know, buy more? like or acquire in the future like why is intel like a blue chip company interested in this in this small cap piece of crap especially a stock with two million shares of float you know that is that is something that can easily get going and that's all you can ask for is potential now you know does it matter that the that the news sucks of course it matters but uh, it all depends on your time frame like my time frame I, I'm looking to sell this in the middle in you know intraday I'm not looking to hold this in my 401k you know so like all that matters is if I'm going to buy it and if it can spike like 30, 40, 50 cents, maybe even a dollar, if, you know, or higher if it, if it really starts, if the float really starts to rotate, you know, that's great. You know, it's all in my time frame. In my time frame, I think this news is bullish. Like in, in my time frame, I think it can go up. Now, am I going to hold this forever? Absolutely not. Like I'm pretty sure the company's a turd. So um, that's my feeling that like if you... If, if you want to be a long biased trader in the small cap world and you want to and you want to eliminate if you want to scratch out uh, companies that 
have dilution or don't make money or don't make revenue, if you only want to trade good small cap companies, you're never going to make a long trade in your life. You know, you're never going to place any trades. Like the reason why all these companies have dilution is because they don't make money and if they don't have any some sort of dilutive property, they're not going to have a ticker and they can't sell any stock. They don't have any chance. So like trying to say I don't want a long is because there's dilution. Like good luck finding some trades. I you know like I, it's it's a risk that I have you know that I have to own if I want to try to long these small caps. Like it's if you look at if you look at like historic names that have just flew like Lake you know L A K E when it had that Ebola when the Ebola when there was an Ebola break um, mass breakout and you know like Lake said that they were going to like they created this you know this suit that was going to protect everybody. That's big. That's hype. You know, this that's one of the stocks that I learned um, this strategy from. It's a hype news. It was a low float. You know, anything with hype can get going. And it does, you know, like eventually the fundamentals matter. But in the short term, like like I forget what price Lake went to, but I mean it it flew shorts to he- to heaven. Like, you know, they died and went to heaven. It's it do- it all depends on your time frame, you know? Like Fundamentals matter in the end, but with small caps and low floats, like price action is king, you know, in my opinion. So, you know, like when 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 this popped up on the Intel news, and like I saw that it popped up on like on rarely any volume, and then it consolidated here. I was looking, you know, I was like, hmm, that was only the first pop, and you know, it it it's a it doesn't look like it has a, a lot of overhead resistance. You know, there's not a lot of volume here. I'm looking. I think, and with the two million share float, I think this thing can go. Like, I think Intel is um is a hype enough news that people are going to like are going to underestimate it or short it, or people are waiting to buy. You know, I think that there are buyers that are interested that haven't bought it yet, and I think you know if I thought that I was early, I thought I could beat them to it. Um, and so like here's my trade one more time. Yeah, so I put on a starter here. Um. And, you know, like sometimes these trades are anticipatory, um, especially in pre-market, like things can really fly fast in pre-market. So, you know, like I I like to, you know, get my feet wet in the trade. So I put some on here um, and and it dipped. And, you know, honestly, a lot of people ask me, like, why don't you add on dips? Isn't that better risk to reward? And the answer is yes, it's better risk to reward. But, you know, I, you know, with a crappy company like this and, I'm not it. I, I rarely ever add on dips. I only like to add on dips if I'm truly convicted in my idea. Like, if I'm really convicted in the idea, then in my you know, and that's my thesis that I'm like it's a really confident trade for me. Then yeah, all dips. Like you know, better price. Like lower the better for a long. Like I just you know I want like lower the better because I'm really confident it's gonna go up. You know, with RBZ, you know like. As as a you know short seller for most of my trading career, automatically I know I know this news is crap, but it's still excitable. So like because it, I know it is crap, I don't, I'm not really like that convicted in the idea. So I'm not gonna I don't want to add on a dip here, and and then it you know like basically have a bigger position when I end up selling. Like if it decided to fade off here, I was totally cool with just ditching this starter. But you know, like once we um, once I consolidate a little bit more and play with VWAP and put in a nice higher low here, I was like, you know, I can add, I can buy here at the break of this channel, and I did, and definitely sold some because I'm not convicted in the idea. You'll notice that a lot. Like if if I'm not convicted in an idea, I'm I'm typically a fast seller, you know. And then we get here to the open, and I gave it a chance. You know, I gave this a chance to go. Um, like on this, I got really excited on this push. It had high volume. I, I was really excited on that push there. Uh, and the second, like it stuffed on high volume, I was like, okay, if, if 500,000 shares couldn't do it, I, I kind of want to sell. So I did sell um, uh, the other third, and I just had like a third, maybe even less, uh, that I'm just waiting for. Like, yeah, this stuff really scared me. I'm, I'm just waiting for, you know, maybe it's going to have a home run potential. I, I consider a 2 million share float with Intel News. It's got that home run potential. And I eventually ended up selling down here when it broke this 220 level. When it broke that 220 level, I was done. And, you know, I was willing to get back in if it wanted to perk again. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't going to be a chaser here. 
So, like, if this had come back and curled, I might have been a buyer over 245 again with the risk here on 225. But, you know, as it turns out, it failed. So, no other trades. But, yeah, like, I just wanted to go over that, you know, like, yes, the news a lot of the times is absolute crap. That doesn't mean it can't go higher. Like, I learned that the hard way on shorts. Like, that is what causes squeezes is people thinking that, that the news isn't worthy and, you know, like, price action is king. Now, so, like, I, I want to say I don't put a lot of faith in, like, a company has dilution. I can't long it. But, like, I want to show that I know this is on RBZ, but there's another quick example that I want to go over uh, maybe to help illustrate this point here. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, it was my PULM trade. So this was this was even a f days ago, but I it was um, I posted it in chat, but I didn't do a recap about it. This was on the seventh last week, but yeah, like so I did care about dilution. PULM, I believe the news was I care about dilution if it sounds suspicious. So PULM uh, about a week ago put out a PR that they were canceling their shelf, right? And and then like so PULM did a verse split for one red flag number one like. Um, then they said we're canceling our shelf, so they make the float really small and then put out a PR that's actually like you know supposedly really bullish, right? If we're not going to be selling stock anymore, but what, one thing I, I noticed is that on PULM, uh, PUL, let me pull it up here on PULM. This is Edgar here with PULM. They put out this PR on the 7th or registration withdrawal request, you know, and what, which one is it right here? No. Where was it? Oh, right here. And you look at the file number. Like, I'm not an expert when it comes to f fundamental filings, but I, I, I know the basics. And so this is like they're withdrawing their registration, their S1. But if you look, and what I did was, what I, what I looked was, I noticed that they had, that was for the S1, but there was no other um, f prospectuses in that, in that uh, file number. And then, so I noticed that these two at the markets, um, these two at the markets had different file numbers, you know, that's, you don't see the with, withdrawal request. The withdrawal request was only for um, the shelf and so these were you know I was guessing different like I can be wrong here I'm not the the biggest fundamental guy but that was my thesis behind that trade like that's kind of when I care about dilution is it when the, when it plays into the story so like PULM um, uh, PULM yeah it the story just added up to where I did take dilution into account you know it did this reverse split and then like a couple days later, like it rounded and I was interested in it on this day, but I didn't trade it. Uh, and then on this day is the day that I bought it. The day, a couple days after the reverse split, hey, here comes a PR canceling, um, canceling their S1. And, and then I, and then I did a little, a little look and I'm like, hmm, but it seems like there's two other, it seems like there's two other forms of dilution um, that they can still hit. So it's almost like we're canceling dilution, everybody buy, but we're going to sell you with our other dilution. So that was kind of my thesis behind that trade. And that's an example of like how I do use dilution. You know, like I figured that they wanted to pump it up to sell and that's why I immediately sold on that perk. You know, I sold immediately because my thought process was it's going to tank. And this kind of gets into another um, topic that I'm going to talk about in another video, but it, when, it, when it comes to bias flipping. And, and I want to go over the kind of struggles that I'm going over with bias flipping, but that's for another video. Like, if, you know, if I thought this was going to be, a, you know, a long and a short, why didn't I short it after I sold? Well, I'll go over that in another video because um, that's a whole other ball of worms. But anyway, that's when I do take dilution into account is uh, when I feel it plays into the story. But for a lot of my longs, like RBZ, I'm just looking to ride the hype train and, and get out you know, before the hype runs out, you know, in the, you know, get, get in before the chasers and sell into the chasers. 
basically. So that was my trade on RBZ. Uh, one more time, I, I put it up here. Um, I, I don't have the whole chart. Like I, I had to leave on Valentine's Day, but um, you know that was that. And I hope you got something out of the video. Um, any questions? Please feel free to ask. Uh, have a have a great weekend, everybody. Take it easy. Aloha.